Hello everybody, welcome to your virtual studio. Today we'll be moving through a 30 minute full body stretch. Um, just something to grab while you're setting yourself up is a stretching strap if you have one. So it could be a yoga strap, a stretching strap, it can be a belt um, off your dressing gown, or it could even be a resistance band that we would use in our Pilates classes. If you don't have anything, that is absolutely fine. It's still going to work, but if you have something to assist, it just might make it a little bit easier. So we will begin in a child's pose and just get ourselves nice and grounded um, and we'll settle ourselves into that shape to begin. So you might have your child's pose with knees together or a little bit wider than your hips to create some space there through the pelvis. So start to walk your arms forward. And then as you begin to lower your chest and your forehead towards the floor, just notice if you're feeling a little bit tight or a little bit sticky around the shoulders. If you are, you might like to bend the hands and bend the elbows off to the side and then bring the hands in to support your forehead. Or you might even start to stretch them down past your hips if your forehead meets the floor. I like mine forward, so I'm going to stretch mine to the top of my mat. From here, just start to settle yourself into your shape and don't rush it, don't force it. You have time to really gradually get yourself there into the deepest part of the stretch. So if you are just moving for the first time today, if you've been a little bit stagnant or fairly passive at your desk or on the couch, just really honour that and move super slowly to begin. And then once the body starts to feel a little bit more heated or a little bit more energised, maybe you'll start to push your body a little bit further if it's feeling it. So as you arrive, just start to find your breath. So an inhale in through your nose and an exhale out through your mouth. So just breathing into the body, inhale. And with your exhale, start to think about rinsing out any tension or any aches or any pains or any feelings of resistance. Use your inhale as you breathe in this beautiful new energy and allow that oxygen to flow throughout your whole body. We're gonna stay in this shape for eight more counts. So wherever you are, you might start to delve a little bit deeper as we hold for the last seven, six, five, four, three, and two, and one. Now, if your arms are anywhere but in front, I'd like you to stretch them to the, towards the top of your mat. Now we're gonna glide ourselves into our puppy stretch. So without adjusting the hands now, reach them even further forward to the front of your mat or the top of your mat, and then lift your tailbone so it starts to move towards the sky and away from your heels. And then just settle into that shape. This might feel a little bit stronger in the shoulders. So again, just adjust the hands if you need to. If you feel like you can stay here, start to melt the chest, melt the sternum, melt your breastbone towards the floor. Stretch the shoulder blades apart. Reach out through the finger pads and ground through the palms of your hands. And then if you're feeling tension through the shoulders at any stage, whether that's the front or the back or the sides, use your breath and direct it into those areas. And we're gonna hold this for another eight. Breathe through it for seven. Stay for six, and for five, for four, three, and two, and one. Now bring the hands back a little bit further towards your, your heels, and then press forward through four-point kneeling position. As you arrive, start to move into your cats and your cows by lifting the spine to the ceiling, and then dropping your belly towards the floor. Now with the first couple of sets, I'd invite you to move super slowly and really work into that full detail of each part of that movement. So as you move into your cat stretch, which is your flexion, it's that beautiful bending of the spine, start to really notice the spine opening, stretching out. And then as you melt through your cow, feel how the belly sinks down to the floor and the low back starts to arch, the shoulder blades pull away from the ears and your gaze moves forward and up. And then once you feel like you've really opened the spine and created a little bit more length, you can increase your tempo and increase your speed. Still energizing through the floor and pushing the floor away for a cat. And then melting the belly for your cow. Stay for four full sets, cat, 
to cow, three more. Cat stretch to cow, two more here. Cat stretch into cow, and then once more, cat stretch into cow. And then find your center somewhere in between both of those extremes. So somewhere that feels fairly neutral. Now we're going to open the knees and connect the toes. So the knees are going to go nice and wide. And we're going to start to alternate an arm twist. So one arm goes and then the other. So we move from right to left. Using your breath, we want to exhale as we twist. Inhale, lower it. Exhale to twist. Inhale, down. Let's move for another eight, seven, six, five, four, and three, and two, and one. Now take your right arm to the sky, reach it up, hold it up, stretch a little bit further, and now thread this right arm underneath your left. Drop your right ear to the floor, reach your left arm to the top of the mat, and then look underneath your left armpit. Take a few breaths. Start to think of your left armpit moving towards the floor as you're gazing still underneath. Holding eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, gently return that left hand closer to your face. And as you push the floor down, return. Left arm lifts to the sky and reach. Push a little further, open further, reach harder. And now thread the left arm underneath the right. Lower the left shoulder, lower the left ear. Reach your right arm to the top of the mat. Start to gaze underneath your right armpit. Feel your breath as it moves through the body and softens out that tension. Then think of rolling your right armpit down closer to the floor, still gazing underneath. You've got this. We're going to hold it for five, for four, three, and two, and one. Take your time. Bring your right hand back to your face. As you press the floor away, return, and then slowly bring the knees back into hip distance. Curl your toes into the floor. Lift your hips to the sky. Now walk your hands to your toes, hand print by hand print. You can bend your knees here. It doesn't matter. Now we're going to take a twist from here. Left arm to the sky. Now you might like to bend the right knee. Reach up. Hold up. Hold five. Hold four. Stay for three and for two. And for one, bring the left hand down and open the right arm. You might like to bend a little through the left knee. Reach the right arm, lift a little bit higher. Keep stretching, keep reaching and hold for five. And for four, and for three, and for two, and for one. Find your center, soften a little into both knees. Stack one hand over the other like a little pancake stack. Now we're going to pulse towards the floor. So I want you to think about bouncing from the hip keeping the legs either straight or with a small micro bend through the back of the knees. Push towards the floor, keep the arms straight, press through for eight, pulse for seven, exhale six, five more, four more, three more, two, and one. Now we reach through the thighs, through the upper thighs. So if you can, think of staying above the knee joint and then press through. We're still bouncing and pulsing from the hips, keeping your back as flat as you can. The knees might be a little bit softer, completely straight your core, cool, and push for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and dangle towards your toes. And then find that softness in the back body. Feel a little bit more open. Now without bending through the opposite knee, see if you can add a twist. And a twist, and a twist. And if you need that small bend into the opposite knee, bring it back. Here for eight. Here for seven. Six more. And five. Keep reaching for four. And for three. And for two. Last one. And hands come down. Walk yourself out through high plank position. Stack your hands under your shoulders. Keep your hips in line with your shoulders and curl the heels away from you. Push the heels away from you and curl your toes under. Now find your pike and then push your chest towards your thighs. Get a really strong grip and start to walk your feet like you're walking on the spot. Walk it out. Stretch out through the Achilles. Stretch out through the back of the ankles and up through the calf and pedal for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, 
and two and one. Now press both heels up to the sky and then push your chest closer into the, your knees and your thighs and then drop both heels and then lift both heels and stretch out through the back of those legs and lift for eight and seven and six. Last five, final four and three and two and one more and soften those heels. Keep your knees a little bit bent here. Pull the right knee forward and set up for pigeon pose. Left leg stays long behind you. Use your hands as you push into the floor and lift through the chest. Take a big breath. On your exhale, start to fold the forearms down, mouse your forehead towards your hands and release yourself into your pigeon stretch. Start to notice your breath. Slow down your inhale. Slow down your exhale. We're holding it here for eight, for seven, for six, five, and four, three, and two, and one. Now start to lift through the chest and drop your right hip to the floor. Now spiral yourself onto your sit bones, keeping your left leg outside the line of your left hip. Now raise your right arm towards the ceiling and stretch over. Side bending through the right hand side of your body. Right hand reaches for the left toes. We hold eight. We hold seven, six, five, four, three, and two, and one. Now lift it up and just take a little relief. And now twist your whole body over the left leg. Reach your right hand and your left hand to meet your left toes. Lower the chest closer and closer to your left thigh, your nose toward your left knee. Stay in it for eight, for seven, six, five, four, and three, and two, and one. Now slowly lift yourself up. Bend your knees so that the left leg goes behind you and you're set up for your mermaid. Now stretch your left arm outside the left ankle, right arm to the sky and open back through the right hand side of the body, just like we did before. Take a big breath, yawn your body further open. Now the right elbow lowers and the left arm goes to the right. Yawn your body open on the left side. Let's go through three more full sets like that. Right arm to the left and left arm to the right. Two more sets, right arm towards the left and left arm towards the right. Good, two more sets and one more set. And then left arm to the right. And then as you find your way back through the center, the left leg comes over the top of the right. And we set up for a shoelace. So the knees don't have to stack, but ideally maybe one day they, they will. But for now, just get comfortable to the best of your ability and walk your arms forward. And then start to think about your chest dropping closer and closer to your left thigh and left knee. You might even like to stack your hands in a little fist and rest your forehead. A little extra support and a little extra height. If you have the flexibility, you might walk the arms forward as far as you can go and then drop the chest towards your knee. Wherever you are, just let the breath do the work. Let it soften out that tension, the aches, the discomfort, and holding eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and two, and one. Gently walk the hands back. And as you lift yourself up, we're gonna untangle those knees and find four point kneeling once again. From here, stretch your right arm and your left leg away from each other, and then bring them back and change left arm, right leg. And start to think about your balance, your stability, and also the length and the space. Find the control and the focus just for eight. And seven, six, five, four more, three, and two, and one more here. 
and then soften the hips to the heels. Stretch your arms forward like you're lifting your tailbone slightly from the heels. Now start to round your spine like a cat stretch. You might stop here or you might start to move towards your swan. And then gently push back towards your child pose. Not all the way. And then forward like your cat stretch. Moving towards your swan if it's there for you or just stopping in cats and then pushing back. Let's do that for eight more sets. So you might just be stopping here, or maybe you like the full extension. Last six, inhale back, and exhale forward. And five more, pushing back and forward. Four more, press those hips back and forward. Three more, press the hips back and forward two more and forward and last one pushing back and forward find your swine press back toward your child's pose but curl your toes into the mat lift the hips to the sky finding pike pedal the feet out just like we did before walking on the spot for eight seven six five four three and two and one take a double heel rise lift those heels up nice and high press your tailbone even more to the ceiling now as you start to move through your plank uh, draw your left knee forward and find your pigeon pose right leg long behind you use your hands press them down into the floor lift your chest can you get the crown of the head towards the ceiling take a full breath with your exhale, slowly walk yourself down, fold the arms down to the floor and get a little bit more comfortable. If you need to, you might even just get a little bit lower, stack the hands in a fist, rest the forehead. You might stretch the arms forward, drop the chest even lower, or maybe you just need to bring it back a little bit and come up through the chest again. So wherever you are, it doesn't matter, whatever you feel comfortable with, we have eight counts, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now use your hands, press gently into the floor, lift the chest up. Drop down onto your left hip so that your right leg is still long but outside the corner of your hip. Now lift the left under the sky as you side bend open into the left hand side of the body. Reach for the right toe with your left hand. Hold it. Keep stretching. Feel the space increasing from that left armpit down to the left hip point. Inhale, exhale. Eight. Stay for seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. And two. And one, just need a little bit of release here. Right arm stretches. Now we're going to twist uh, our torso and reach over that left, uh, the right leg. Both hands now are reaching for the right toes. Can you get your chest to melt closer to the right thigh? Maybe your nose moving closer to the right knee. Wherever you are, wherever your hands are, support yourself with your breath. Stay with it. Hold it. Breathe through it for eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bringing yourself back through the center, bending at the right knee so the right leg tucks behind, setting up for your mermaid. Now stretch your right arm outside your right shin, lift the left arm and start to side bend once again. Open into that left hand side. Can you reach a little bit further than you did a moment ago? Inhale, hold it there. And with your exhale, the right arm starts to lift, stretching over to the left, left elbow drops to the floor, and you're on the right side, body open, inhale. Exhale, hold it for four, for three, and two, and one. Let's get three more sets in, left arm to the right. Right arm to the left. Two more sets, left arm to the right, and right arm to the left. Last set, left arm to the right, and our right arm to the left. And then bring yourself back through center and fold your right leg 
over the top of the left. So now we're moving into our shoelace where our knees are maybe stacking, maybe not quite. That's okay if they're not. Maybe cross leg is your thing today. And then once you get your shape, reach the arms forward. Fold down a little bit lower. Think about your chest dropping over the knee, over the thigh. You might even like to support your forehead and make a little fist stack and then rest your forehead on your fist. Or if the flexibility allows, the arms walk forward and we gently close the space between chest and thigh. Holding for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and two, and one. Bring the hands back in, push the chest up, and then take a seat with your left leg nice and long. Your right foot crosses outside the left thigh, and we're gonna add a twist here. So we're gonna to twist to the right side. Now this left leg is still energized, so don't let it go floppy now. Push it down into the floor, chest lifts, and we add our twist. We continue twisting and start to look further and further around our right shoulder. Use your breath to soften out that tension and hold eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Take your time to bring yourself back through the center and then swap those legs over. So the right will go long, the left knee will bend, and the left foot sits outside the right knee. Now let's start to turn to the left. Now as we're turning to the left, we're not letting the right leg, uh, we're not forgetting about the right leg, we're pressing it actively down into the floor and our left hand presses down behind our tailbone, lift the chest up. Start to twist and look around your left shoulder. Use your breath and start to feel a rinsing happening out of your belly, out of your waist. If you feel like there's space still, continue to twist and continue to look around the left shoulder. We have an eight count hold. Seven, six, five, four, three, and two, and one. And we slowly spiral back through the center. Now here's where we wanna grab our stretching strap if we have one. Lay yourself down on your back and take your right leg to the sky with the strap sitting over the top of the right leg. Now, I'm going to show you with the strap first, and then for those that don't have one, here's how you can modify. You can take your hands to the back of your thigh or the back of your calf, and just assist the leg by holding it. Let the shoulders sit into the floor, feeling into your Pilates rectangle. So we want our shoulders to still draw straight lines over the top of those hips. Feel as the breath works and travels down along the back of this right leg. Keep your neck nice and long. Start to roll out your foot if you can. Draw some circles in both directions. So whether that's five one way, five the other, or eight one way, eight the other. Whatever your body needs, if it feels a little bit tight and it doesn't feel like there's much movement, go for the bigger circles or the, the more, uh, more reps in your circles. You might also like to add some toe twinkling. You might also add a flex and a point, or maybe you'll add them all in and get as much movement there as you can. Now we still have eight counts. So feel into the space increasing along the hamstring in the back of the knee. Last four. Three, two, and one. Now hold the strap as firmly as you can. Stretch your left arm outside your left shoulder. And now open the right leg out towards the right hand side of your body. Drop it off to the line of the hip, thinking of tightening your grip on the strap. Now if you don't have a strap or something to assist, you might like to bend your knee and hold the front of your shin as the knee just starts to fall outside of your, your rib cage or outside of the waist. So that's a really nice option if you don't have something to give you that extra length. So whatever option you have now, bring attention to the left-hand side and just make sure that you're not lifting off the mat. We wanna stay grounded to the best of our ability and hold for eight, seven, six, 
two, and one. Take your time as you return this right leg back to the sky. Pop the strap off to the side. Now fold your right leg to the left. Now let both arms stretch out like a big capital T and feel your breath as it moves and wraps around your spine like a spiraling staircase. You might like to look to your right fingertips. We have five more counts. Four, three, two, and one. Now take your time to return gently onto your back. And then bend your left knee, take your left leg to the sky, and stretch your right leg to the end of your mat. Set yourself up for your hamstring stretch here on the left. Let the strap sit over the top of the sole of your foot. Shoulders are grounded, neck is still long, your spine is relaxed. Find your breath and with your inhale, breathe in a new energy, flow it all the way through the body. With your exhale, start to feel any of that tension, so any of that tightness starting to really fade, maybe become fainter and fainter with your exhales. Again, if you don't have the strap, you might like to hold the back of your thigh or the back of your calf just acting as a strap. Then with your foot free, start to circle out. Draw circles one direction and then the other. Maybe five one way, five the other, or if it does feel quite tight and quite sticky, maybe limited mobility, move through eight to 10 circles each direction. You can twinkle your toes and get some movement there through the tops of the feet. And then you can even start to flex and point. Toes to sky, toes to nose, toes to sky, toes to nose. And then get all of that movement in for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now we'll set up for our inner thigh and adductor stretch. So hold the strap nice and firm with your left hand. Open the left leg out to the left. Your right arm is going to counterbalance this weight. So the right arm needs to go outside the right shoulder and ground it down into the floor. Just check in that your right hip and your right thigh is also creating an anchor. So it needs to stay really active and pressing down through the mat. And again, if you don't have a strap, a nice option is to bend at the knee and hold the front of the shin and just let the knee kind of fall outside of the, the rib cage or outside of the waist, kind of on that line of your armpit. So either option are absolutely fine. Wherever you are, stay for eight more counts. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now take your time to slowly return. Now as the leg comes back through the middle, drop your strap, bend your knee and fold it over your body towards the right. Stretching your left arm and your right arm into a big capital T. Adjust your hips if you need to feel a little bit more comfortable. Let the shoulders sink into the floor. Maybe you gaze over your left hand. As your spine, as your breath <laughs> works around your spine, creating that beautiful spiraling sensation. We have another five count hold. Four, three, two, and one. Take your time, slowly come back onto your back. Bend both knees and ground both feet into the floor. Bring your hands down closer to your hips, and then just. Finish with a few hip rolls. Finishing in that spinal articulation. Just freeing it all up, creating that length again after the twist. Keeping your shoulders grounded, neck is still long. And we think about moving the spine up and down in order. So from the upper spine to the low spine, the tailbone, and then from the tailbone all the way up through the upper spine. So final eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, 
four, three, two, and one. As your tailbone meets the floor here, grab your legs, grab the thighs, and swing yourself up to a seat. A cross-leg position at the top, and then a swing, a cartwheel of the arms from right to left, opening back through those lateral lines of the body. Once you feel even on both sides, you can bring yourself back into the center and take an inhale, lifting your arms overhead to the sky, join your palms through to prayer, and with your exhale, guide your hands to your third eye. Hope and dreams. Bring your hands to your lips for truth and honesty. And bring your hands to your heart for love and compassion. Blink your eyes open, release the hands, roll the shoulders, give your head a little nod up and down, and even a little shake from left and right. And well done, everybody.